Rob from Dodge and Fusky here, back with part two of the Looperator video from Sugarbytes. Um, okay, so now what we're going to be doing in part two is looking at some more kind of advanced editing modes. Um, so what I'm going to do first, I'm going to use the uh, this instance that I was using in part one on this drum loop. Uh, I'm going to initialize it here. Uh, you can you can either initialize it manually or you can use right click to just remove elements. So you know either all works fine. Uh, and what we're going to be doing is using a function called tie. Now, so far as I'm sure you've seen, we've been using everything's been kind of set to whatever resolution you have the grid to. It's set to that individual kind of slot, so it will just you know do quick events there, and that will kind of be it. So, for example, if I put a uh, you know put a, a filter like a, a low pass on the kick, and if I put the same one here, it would kind of go. It would kind of you know do separate effects. Now, what you can do. If you hold on click is you can drag it across and you can make it as long as you want. So you can make really long ones that go this long. So I could do two, you know, I could do um two of them here, link them together. And obviously this works with whatever you have on that. So if I had a high pass thing. kind of combine them and layer them like that now obviously this is most useful for things like um, filters but it's obviously great if you wanted to do something for example a um, what a good one would be maybe something like a tape stop you could either have like, like this or you could have it sort of slow down um, I love the tape stop um, functionality in this plugin by the way I think it sounds really legit um, it's something I used to do manually using audio envelopes, <laughs> which used to take forever. Uh, so that, that's one thing that I have been using this for quite a bit. Um, now, what I'm going to go into now is going into the user edit mode. Now, what I'm going to do on that, I'm going to do it using um, a massive. I'm just going to play it straight. Playing a very boring kind of sawtooth, squarey type thing. I haven't even bothered to make the sound sound interesting because that's not the purpose of this demonstration. Um, but I've got a user. In fact, I've made two user LFO type filter things on it, which you can see in the pattern here. So play with some drums. And this is really, really easy to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to completely initialize this and make something similar from scratch. So the first thing you need to do is you need to set up what your custom uh, user things are. And I'm going to do it with filters. There's no time to go through everything, but you can do it with loads of different parameters. So I'm going to make two custom um, filter presets. So this one I'm just going to have set to a, uh, a sign. You can affect the, uh, the size of it here um, in terms of how much modulation there is. There's also... Um, uh, Different things that you can have here. So, for example, here I've got the I've got the resonance of the filter um, set to control relative to the uh, the cutoff amount. Uh, there's also these are linked. You can do left and right separately if you want, and then there's obviously mixed controls of how much effect that's affected. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the user one across the board here. Um, I'm just going to if you can you can hold down one click or you can just drag them so it will continue to play them, and then I can play it while I'm experimenting. I'm going to solo the channel. So I can now go, oh, I'd like, you know, a double sign. And you can you can adjust. So let's say I like that. And then let's say I want to make another one as well. And I want to have like, for example, I might want to alternate between, you know, user one and user two here. So I'll just, you know, do that and then we'll do use the two all the way across there. So now I'll go into the edit mode and I can tweak this. So I'm gonna I already got an idea in my head, I'm gonna make it double the length. Okay, so we're obviously gonna have to change. And obviously the sound that I'm getting is very much up to what you want to do, but I'm sure you're getting the idea that there's a lot of scope here for experimenting. And as with a lot of the stuff in the plugin, you can randomize it. So, for example, let's have made a bunch of these. Um, I could randomize this row based on different stuff that I've been doing, and I could add my uh, add my user sound back in by holding down either one or two. 
and then keep the rest of the randomized pattern and see what we get. And I'll just play that back with the drums. So you can see if you're making this kind of weird dubstepy experimental kind of headsy stuff, it's really useful for kind of just having fun. And like, you know, none of that's been done in the synth. Just to remind you, this is all we're getting out of the synth. Um Oh, you have to excuse my, my, my Apple mouse there being a bit difficult. Um, so yeah, hopefully that has given you a good idea of what you can do with kind of custom user editing. There's a lot of scope for having fun with this um, with this plugin, and hopefully this video has demonstrated you'd, that to you. Okay, so left in part three, I'm going to be going through how you can use it live, uh, you know, triggering stuff from MIDI. So we'll see you in part three. <laughs>